Okay, so we see that creating our applications as universal Windows apps for our DLL libraries may have been an issue because we're not being able to import those into our Windows Forms application. So I'm going to try an alternative here um, in Visual Studio. I'm going to start with our student app. Let's see what we can do here. I'm going to try a couple of things because, of course, I want you guys to always try some things. Keep track of what you're trying. Take a you know, logical approach. Only try one thing at a time. Don't make a bunch of changes. Now, when this comes up, I was closing it, and I found some information about this online. And it says that the first time we create a universal Windows app, like our DLL library, we have to activate developer mode. Now, we're not really going to be using this mode too often, but I will just go ahead and do that. So we want to go to developer mode. And it says, this could expose your device to security risks. That's true, because you're a developer. So I'm going to say yes, because I understand that as a developer, I need to take frequent backups and make sure that my device is properly protected. Now we'll see <laughs> if this is going to make me restart, if we'll start another video if that happens. I'm going to let it do its thing. So what I'm thinking is that I want to try opening our student DLL library. Okay, it says everything's good. Now you could go through again all of these settings and be sure to um, check them all, make sure your device is nice and secure. But I'm going to get back to our job at hand, which is our student class. Now, when we're looking at a project like this and we have a difference in versions, we can do some searching online and try to find some information out. And most everything I find leads me to believe that I have to have another type of project. So in my solution, I'm going to add a project. And this time, I'm going to use a a um, class library, the legacy portable type. I'm going to name this student class legacy. Now it says how do you want to create this? Well, I need .NET Framework since that's what my Windows app is going to be. And it says, oh, this can't work because of your project type. Let's try this again. Cannot be targeted. Can we do them all? Let's try it. Now, in my new student legacy project, we're going to <laughs> rename our class file the student again. Now, I'm going to go to the existing student class. I'm going to leave my namespace out but start selecting after that. And I'm going to select all this code. And I could probably just add this as an existing file, but I'll just copy it. Go to my new student class. 
paste it, make sure I got that right. Name space, student class legacy, public class student. Oops, I've got two. So let me get rid of that extra class decoration. And down at the end, get rid of this extra closing curly brace. That should get everything about right. Now I can get rid of some of these extra leaving statements, and I should be able to build the project again. Now when we're doing a build, are we building the solution or are we building the project? Building the solution, right? So let's rebuild the whole thing. Now I want to look at the File Explorer view the folder view and in my bin debug I have my student class keep looking here we didn't get anything to that other one did we so let's right click set it as the startup project, and let's build it. Now I want to look at that folder view again. And you can laugh and say, well, you weren't looking at the right project. Hmm, I bet you're right. I wasn't. Bin, debug, ah, oh, there it is. Our student class legacy DLL. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it into our DLL library. And I'm going to open our forms based application. I must have closed it. Let me do, 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 stupid listing app. That was it. So I'm going to try to add a reference to that new student DLL. So I'm going to clear these and browse and pick our legacy and click OK. Oh, it took it. Let's go up to our using clauses. And there is our student legacy class that we are being able to um, reference. So let's do that to our other DLL projects. My student class, I'm going to close that project. And I'm going to open our graduate student. I want our graduate class. So this is our graduate class solution. I'm going to find Solution Explorer, add a new project to the solution. Say it's a legacy portable class library. We'll rename graduate. Of course, we notice this is not mattering. It's naming it whatever it likes. And we're going to again include all three of its platforms. And now we have our new graduate portable. What I want to do here is show you how we could add an existing file. So in our um, graduate, whoops, I need to delete that one. Let's get rid of it. 
Do you see what I did? I'm going to remove it. And I'm going to add another new one. Let's do this right. I was thinking, huh? Now it's going to be a class library. This is going to be graduate class legacy. Better. Now, in our new project, our legacy project, I need to just have this graduate class. So I'm going to add an existing item. It goes straight into our new project folder. So I want to go up one into our solution and into our graduate class that existed already and pick that graduate.cs file. And now I should be able to delete this class one.cs file. Now my namespace name needs to be updated to graduate class legacy. And other than that, I shouldn't need to do anything else to this program. Now, I am going to check our references. In our references of our legacy project here, we do not have our student object. So let's add that. We want our student class legacy. OK. And now we should be able to build My build failed. It says student class could not be found. Okay. So this is in our previous project. The reference has student class. Should all be there. Um. In our properties, I'm going to add reference. We'll add this this one. Is it going to work? No. Sorry. We have to switch them both over. Let's build again. Well, everybody should be happy. So I had to switch both projects to use the same instance of our student class DLL. So they're both going to have to refer to the student class legacy. That's OK. Let's switch to our file explorer folder view. We know that we have the DLLs now in both consistencies, flavors. So whatever we need, we have. Now in our graduate class legacy, folder. That's what I want to expand. I want to look at the bin debug and I want to get this graduate class legacy DLL. So I'm going to copy it and again I'm going to paste it into our DLL library. Now our last update is going to be to our career center class. So let's try that again. On the solution, we're going to add a new project. It is going to be a legacy class library. We will name it Career Center Class Legacy. We'll use all those platforms. 
we'll add an existing item. We'll go up a folder to find it and into our Career Center class folder and grab our Career Center .cs file. We can delete then our class one. And now our Career Center class file looks good, except we need to fix things up first. So let's add a reference. And we want to add our reference to our student legacy class. in our references above. Let's do that same thing. Add our legacy. Remove the old one. And make sure that we're specifying the correct version. So we have legacy everywhere here again, and we're ready to build it. Do, do, do. Oh, it's all happy. It all succeeded. Everything's great. Let's go to that folder view. And I want to look in our bin debug folder. I want career center class legacy. I'm going to copy it and paste it into my DLL library folder. Woohoo! Now, I'm ready to continue work on the forms-based application. We were able to add our student reference, student class legacy. We got it here, so let's see if we can add our other two. Career Center Class Legacy and Graduate Class Legacy. Yay! Took them all. Now I'm going to update our user statements. It doesn't matter which one you use because it's using the legacy one. And it found both of those projects inside there that have the same exact information. So we're okay that way. So we've got everything finally, all of our references set up. So as you notice, creating the um, structure for your project is very important. The framework here that Visual Studio gives you can be extended. And as you're extending it, then you have to continue working on things, getting it set the way that we need it. Now to get back to our form here, we were looking at having this drop down list, um, let the user choose which type of students they want to view, and then listing those type of students in the list box. So we are at our form load, ready to create some generic objects. First we're going to create some Where am I? Sorry. Some tables basically to hold this information. So let's start out with a table or an array named grads. And we're going to say that, the, whoops, it was helping me there. Escape. And grads is going to be equal to a new graduate student. And we're going to hold five of them in this array.
Now, we're getting an error saying, what kind of data type are you talking about? Well, that's because I want to create some class level fields. And we're going to create one as our graduate array, grads, and another one for our undergraduates, our career center students. Now, in our form load, we're actually instantiating and allocating these arrays. And our graduate array is going to have five entries. Our career center array will have 10. And of course, you can change this and try many, many different ways of manip manipulating things. Now we're going to set up some new instances of our graduate data type into our array. The first one, we've got to create some test data here. Sometimes that can be the hardest part of our job. Depends, depends. Now, this person here is going to be a CS major. And notice how we're getting all of this information for us in our IntelliSense because it's finding all of that data from our classes. We'll go down to the next line so we can see it easily. We're going to create several of those entries. Get them set up so that you can see them. And get them all consistent. So there's our test data for our graduate students. We'll leave that here for a second so we can get it all done. Okay, so we have front-loaded some data here to be test data for our graduate students. Now we're going to do the same thing for our Career Center students. Let's see what we can do for them. We're going to start out with a new Career Center student for each entry in our array. Okay, so here for David, I've got him, David Smith, he's a CS major, here's his number, he's a freshman, um, we wanted to know when he was going to graduate, didn't we, 2020, and then what was our other field we needed for that career center? Oh, the Guardian stuff. All right. Now we want to create 
quite a few rows here of test data for our career center students. Let me rearrange here a little bit. Hopefully you can see. So I'm going to take David Smith here and copy him. And paste. <laughs> all right, so that just gives us a couple. I'll let you spend some time getting those all created. In the meantime, let's go ahead and create our code here to actually make this do something. So I'm going to run right now and make sure that everything is Happy so far, and we should have a drop down list. Graduate students, career center students, awesome. So let's implement that on our form. We want to associate some code with this combo box when somebody selects an item. So I'm going to double click on that, and we get our selected index changed method, which is exactly what we want. Now, in this example, we're going to start out with our result label. Set to a blank value. And then if our type selected index, if the one they picked is equal to zero, that first one, then we know we want to do our career center students. So for each career center student in our career array, Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. Hang on just a moment. Okay, so for each career center student, do, 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 do. let's add them. We want to add that student to our list. Now, we really just wanted the student ID. So let's just add the student ID. That's enough. We don't really want to run the two string method for that student. We just want to run and load in that student ID. Now, if they chose the other drop down item, Our type selected index equals one. Then we want to do a for each graduate student in our career array. We want to add them to our items list. Wrong array, huh? We want our grads array. That looks better. I am having a little bit of issues with these curly braces. The else clause not having curly braces just doesn't really 
work very well in this up-to-date version of Visual Studio. And it's better anyway, so I'll add those curly braces to the else clause. We should be able to try now to run this. Graduate students. Well, I just have it totally backwards, don't I? So let's fix that. If it's one, I want to do career center students zero. I want to do graduates. A little bit of inconsistency on my part there. Graduate students list. Career center students. Hmm, I'm still giving a problem. Value cannot be null. Oh, that was for me not finishing up filling up our array, huh? So let's just add some double checks here. Can I say student? And we probably want to do that in this one also. Student not equal null, meaning there's nothing there. Because we could have some empty entries in our array. Let's try that. Graduate students, no empty entries. Career center students. Crashing like a big dog. Parameter name item. Value could not be null. I do want you to be null. If student not equal null. Let's just go change our array because I don't want to fight with this forever. I know you would figure it out. I ended up with only two entries here. Let's make sure that really is the problem. Nope, it's still not out yet. Okay, so we'll do some debugging on that and see what's wrong. Students, students. Probably something to do with our constructors, huh? Let's see, what are we missing on this one? Nothing. Well, it's just being mean as can be, isn't it? So, I'm going to pause here for a moment. And I will be right back.